All right, guys, we're getting near the end. This is the second to the last section of notes that you're going to have, unless you're taking the final, and then we'll have some notes for that. But um, as far as new material, this is the second to last one. We're going to call this one 4.6. And our question is going to be, how do I multiply with square roots? So multiplication with square roots is pretty straightforward, but I just want to review one review question with addition. So let's review how we do the square root of 20 minus the square root of 18. That is not root 2. Remember, we can only add and subtract if we have like roots. If they're not like roots, then we need to simplify them first by finding our biggest perfect square. And again, that list should be in your head. If not, you write it on paper. 1 times 1, which is never helpful. 2 times 2, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared. Whoops, <laughs> I was going to write 7 squared. I meant to write 49 etc. You need to recognize them up to 10 squared, which is 100. We're looking for the one hiding in our root. Is there a perfect square hiding in 20? And the answer is yes, it's 4. So we break it into root 4 times root 5. Is there a perfect square hiding in 18? Do not tell me 3 times 6. Those are not in our list of besties. I'm going to break it into root 9 because that's a perfect square. Whoops. All right, so I'm going to clean this one up, and I'm going to get 2 root 5 minus 3 root 2. I actually didn't mean for that to happen. I didn't think this went out in full, but it kind of proves a point. Once I get down here, I cannot subtract those. And again, it's because they are not like roots, so this would be done. For multiplication, what I do is I can multiply. You can multiply as long as you can multiply roots as long as, and I'm going to ask you this when you come up to talk to me, so as long as you have both in, what does that mean? What I mean by both in is root 2 in the root and root 5 in the root is root 10. We we'll use the property that says the square root of a times b, you can split them up. You can also put it back together. So it's perfectly legal if you were to go to a calculator and evaluate both of those, you'll get the exact same decimal. So when both are in, we're good to go. And root 10 doesn't simplify, so it's done. Or both are out. Well, both out... This is what I mean by that. So suppose I have 3 root 2 times 5. I've got these that are out of the root and this that is in. I can multiply what is outside of the root together. 3 times 5 is 15. Root 2 stays in. And when I have 1 in, 1 out, I've got to leave it. I can't call that any kind of a 30. It's done. So when I take this idea of being able to multiply if both are in and both are out and apply it to just some straight up multiplication, this is what I get. Let's go take a look. Suppose I asked you to do the square root of 5 times the square root of 10. Those are both in. What that means is I can consolidate them and bring them in as the square root of 5 times 10. Put them under the same roof. 5 times 10 is 50. This doesn't mean I'm done. So over on the side, right in big letters, you also need, oops, I'm not going to fit it, to simplify. Root 5 didn't simplify. Root 10 didn't simplify. But when I multiply them to get a root 25, I've got one of my besties hiding out in there. Oh, I thought I had the list going up on top. 50 has a beautiful perfect square of 25 in it, so I break it down a little farther. Root 25, I know. It's 5. So I end up getting 5 root 2. Who would have thunk it? That root 10 times root 50 is actually 5 times the square root of 2. And again, what did I do here? I multiplied everything that was 
under the root. Now, does that mean you always multiply everything that's under the root? And I'm going to tell you, no. It's up to you, but make a wise choice. So take a look at this one, and I'm going to give you a second to write it down. I've got a negative 3 outside of the root and nothing else outside. So that's going to hang along for the ride. I've got two things under the root, an 18 and a 25. Could I multiply them together? Sure, I'll get some big number, and that big number is going to need to get simplified, and that's sometimes difficult to do. So usually what I will tell people is if when you multiply under the root, you get something bigger than 100, then I would opt not to do that because it's just going to make it more work for you probably in the end. So instead of making that root 18 times 25, I'm going to deal with them separately for a little bit. I know the square root of 25. Oh, my smart board just locked up, so I'm going to wait and see if it catches up with me. Um, I know the square root of 25. It's exactly 5. So what I'm going to want to do is, why not just take that I know that the square root of 25 is 5 and do it. All right, so I'm going to take that and make it a 5. I can put it, now I've got the negative 3 out and a 5 out, and I'll be able to work with those. The square root of 18 is the only thing left under a root, and that's so much smaller to deal with. What goes into 18? 3 and 6. No because now you're breaking one you don't know into two you don't know. I need the perfect square hiding out in there. And the perfect square hiding out in 18 is a 9. Now this yields a 3. So now look at what I've got. I've got negative 3 on the outside. I've sucked a 3 outside and a 5 outside. The only thing left under the root is the square root of 2, and that goes in my answer. Otherwise, I do negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9, times 5, which is negative 45. It's all outside of the root. So I'm going to repeat what I did on both of these. On this first one, I had 2 living under there and 5 living under there. I multiplied them together and got a 10. The reason I did that is because it's nice and easy to work with. On this next one down here, I had an 18 and a 25. And when I multiply those, I get something big, which I don't want to work with. Furthermore, I knew the square root of 25 was 5. So I did that to make it easier and to knock it down. It's kind of like with fractions. If you were to have a 30 over a 50, knock a 10 out of it before you keep working. So sometimes you have some options. So let me take another one for you. All right, let's suppose we were doing... I'm going to do this one two ways so you can see how sometimes you can do stuff a couple ways and it's still right. This is really similar to number seven on your worksheet today. So if you get stuck on that one, what could I do? Well, let's say person number one. Nice name, number one decides that they like the fact that they know that 2 times 20 is 40. They don't mind working with 40 because it's a fairly small number. So they keep the 3 on the outside, multiply to get a root 40. That person is completely right. They're not done because there's still a perfect square hiding out in 48 times 5. No, those aren't perfect squares. My perfect square hiding out in 40 is a 4. And then it'd be times 10. So I'm breaking that apart. Square root of 4, I know. It's 2. And now when I have both in or both out, I can multiply. And I get 6 root 10. And that's right. And person number 1 is fabulously brilliant. Person number 2 says, hey, you know what? I don't know square root 2. True that. But 
And Miss LaRude said, when there's something out front, just let it hang along for the ride. True, Dad, also. And person number two might say, you know what? I can easily see there's a four living in 20. And that's true. So that person could say, I'm going to just do root four. Oopsie, sorry. I'm just going to do root four. And I hate to give you two ways because sometimes that screws people up, but it really doesn't matter as long as you don't f break any rules. Everything person one did is legal. Everything person two is now doing is legal. Person two spotted a four hiding out in 20. So now look at what we've got. Two things under the root, a root two and a root five, both in, I can multiply them. Both out, I can multiply them. Three times two is six. You'll notice I've got the exact same answer. So the moral of that story is you might do it differently than your neighbor and get the right answer. So what I'm going to do is write one last example down on here. And I want you, I'm going to write it first. I want you to do six root five times root nine on your own by pausing the video and checking yours. There's two ways to do it, and I'll do it both ways. I want you to pause the video right now and go do this one on your own. Okay, we're back. So again, I'm going to play person number one and person number two. Person number one's a rule follower. He or she said, the root said, if they're both in, I multiply them. And that is so true, and that is so right. But watch what person number one now needs to do. They need to find the perfect square that's hiding out in 45. And so they re-break it. They say, oh, that's root 9, root 5. And the square root of 9 is 3. And so I've got 6 times 3, which is 18, root 5. That's legal, but you kind of went in a circle. Because I already knew the square root of 9 was 3. So instead of putting it back together and re-breaking it, I could have just said it's 6 root 5, bam, bam, times 3. And I get 18 root 5 in a much smoother fashion. But both are right. All right. So what do you do if you get this? Root 7 root 7 is root 49, which is 7. Watch this. Root 8, root 8 is root 64, which is 8. Watch this. Root 11, root 11 is root 121, which is 11. Don't write this all down. Root x, root x is root x squared, which is just x. So anytime you're doing something like root 5, root 5, you're going to get root 25, which is 5. Or if you do root 14 squared, it's root 14, root 14, which is just 14. So those are kind of nice and easy to do. So your worksheet is going to be worksheet number six. It is a buff color. There are 18 questions with the answers on the bottom. If you are not finding your answers on the bottom, you need to come see yours truly. Peace out, Girl Scout. I'm done.